Dre. Hi. Welcome to Geek Syndicate. Thank uh, you. The first question I'm going to ask, which is a question I'm sure you're going to get asked all the time, was <laughs> how did you become involved with Kick-Ass? Um, well, I'd known Mark Miller for a while, and uh, Mark knew that I worked with Matthew, and uh, asked me if I'd pass on a message to him actually about Thor, which right. Matthew was <laughs> supposed to be doing at the time. Um, and then after that, he said, actually, you know what, I've got this idea that I'm working on, I'm really, really excited about it, I really want to tell Matthew about that, because I think it might be right up his street. And uh, Mark came along to the Kick-Ass premiere, and came along to the party, met Matthew at the party after. Oh, sorry. He, uh, he, Mark came along to the party after the Kick-Ass premiere, met Matthew properly, and uh, pitched him the idea, and they got to talking, and Matthew was understandably as excited about it as Mark was and as I was. And um, and obviously, as Matthew and I would worked together, it just all, uh, that was how I sort of ended up still involved. Right. <laughs> they didn't boot me off it or anything. So what was your first thought when you actually read the comic itself? Because it was a bit of a weird situation. Because, I mean, I've, I'd i started reading the comic and I'd got to about issue three yeah. and then they announced the film was coming out. Right. And then my sort of first thought was, I can't see how this is going to be a film. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit previous. It's a bit yeah. previous. Um, no, in fact, uh, uh, Mark was still writing it when yeah. we started work on it, but it, you know he told us in great detail where the story was going, and he had this, uh, you know, he had a finished script for the first issue, and that was pretty much done, and John was working on the art for that, and uh, he had uh, the next three issues pretty much outlined right, okay. and but the rest he knew roughly what was going to happen but it was interesting i mean the the screenplay and the comic sort of grew up alongside each other yeah because you i mean obviously you did stardust but this is right. a slightly di- well i say slightly I mean, uh, this is worlds <laughs> apart from stardust yeah. um so how was it i mean how difficult did you find it sort of bringing the kick-ass universe to the big screen um i really enjoyed it you know i really enjoyed the challenge i you know it, it was so much fun writing you know, American dialogue because that's <laughs> a great challenge you know you don't want to you know just uh, just making sure that you, you're keeping your ear open for any little uh, you know uh, wrong English things and yeah. so it's almost like writing a foreign language sometimes. Well how, I mean how do you go about preparing to do something like that then? Um, I don't know I, I tend to be I suppose as a writer I'm always interested in the way people use language and so it's something that I've always kind of kept my ear open for and I noticed those I, lo- I love noticing those little differences in in phrases and, and the way people use language. So I guess it was partly that and then uh, partly just checking, you know, double-checking if something sounded a bit wrong to my yeah. ear, and which we carried on doing through the shooting as well. I'd occasionally say to Chris, hang on, would you say that? Yeah. You know, and it's also writing for teenagers as well because you don't want to sound like some old bag who's <laughs> put all the wrong stuff that teenagers would never say. You're very kind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, luckily I had my kids and uh and then uh chris is obviously an authentic american teenager and so uh, he was able to uh, uh to also cast an eye over it but hopefully i don't think i screwed up that often so <laughs> <laughs> um obviously uh mark millar wrote the comic and yes. john Romita Julia did the art Indeed. how involved were they in the actual bringing kick ass to screen with you guys um well mark obviously at the outset uh, very kindly signed off on all the plans for the <laughs> story and and everything like that and um and you know we consistently consulted mark on stuff because it was important you know it's his mm. world that he'd created in his head and um yeah i mean he he was consulted on lots of different things i mean just when there were decisions to be made he'd always be included in on you know from everything from you know which colour wig do you reckon Hit Girl should have? To uh, to you know, what comic books should we have in the comic shop uh, on display? I mean, obviously we wanted all the comic books in the comic shop, but which ones should we put in front? Yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, obviously when the sort of when uh, Matthew tried to sort of pitch the film around, he wasn't getting a lot of takers, and he decided to go and fund it himself. And right. Stuff like that. Were you ever worried that it was never going to make it to screen? Um, I don't know. I think we were. Th- it's really hard to say because, yeah, obviously on paper we should have been. <laughs> <laughs> You're very worried. Um, yeah. I mean, but the thing was it wasn't getting t- turned down in a kind of this is rubbish, forget it, yeah. to go and do something else. It was more, uh, you know, we wouldn't know how to market this, we couldn't possibly make this, or we would make this if Hit Girl was 18 
uh, and everyone else was 22. For some reason, that's apparently right, because it's legal to murder people when you're 18, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Right. Um, but, yeah, no, so it wasn't like people going, this is shit. Uh, you know, it was people saying, we just don't know how we would market this, and, and we're, you know, we're not sure about investing in it. Um, so... I think, you know, I was so happy that Matthew still had faith in it exactly as it was. And uh, and it was just a matter of, yeah, I think it was just something we all, everyone involved mm. felt passionate about. And you can never predict how a film's going to do, you know. Yeah. You, could, you just, you never know. You could be involved on something that the studios had fallen all over and, and, and everyone's kissing your backside and, <laughs> and it still might not succeed. So you just, you just never know. Yeah. I think one of the things that I sort of got from seeing the movie that it felt very much, very faithful, actually, to the actual comic. Um, I can say that now because I've read the other issues. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, how, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this, actually. Um, how important is it to you to get the, um, to be faithful to the source material as opposed to the narrative of the actual story? From I a think movie point the, of view? for me, um, on everything that I've adapted, it's always been about being faithful to the spirit of the original material. So trying to not write anything that you think the original author wouldn't have liked or <laughs> wouldn't have um, wouldn't have maybe included, you know. Um, but I, I think, you know, realistically, you can't actually stay relentlessly faithful because, you know, I, I mean, maybe more so with the comic book because of the structure of it yeah. you know it, but I mean for something like Stardust you know if you made an absolutely faithful reproduction of it it would be seven hours long <laughs> <laughs> so you know and I think but I, you know I was lucky in that you know Neil was very supportive about that and the and the last screenplay I just wrote the uh, uh, which was the woman in black Susan Hill's been incredibly supportive and it's just about being respectful to the original material and true to the spirit of it and not suddenly turning it into something it's not yeah and my last question, which I think you've just asked, is what's what's next for you? Uh, that would be the next thing. Well, we've, uh, there's another um, screenplay that Matthew and I worked on together called The Debt, which right. uh, the film's directed by John Madden, but that's sort of non-genre. Um, it's really different to both Stardust <laughs> and Kick-Ass. It's a very un-both of us, but it's, a, it's a, a really interesting drama that's got um, Helen Mirren in it as a retired Mossad agent. It's oh, an interesting okay. story. Um but that's coming out later this year. And then I just literally just finished uh, uh, doing an adaptation of The Woman in Black, which is a you know, traditional ghost story, right, Victorian, okay. but proper horror, but in a uh, sort of ghosty, sort of quite J-horror way. It right. is the direction I've tried to go with it. And uh, um, and that's been directed by James Watkins, who did Eden Lake. Excellent. All right then. Thank well, you. thanks a lot for your time. Hey, really nice to meet you properly. You too. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, no, yeah. Not just a voice I've been shouting over, no. yeah, shouting in the background. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. That's okay. Cheers.